Hello and welcome to a short video on how to get started programming. If you've never programmed anything before then and you're interested in it I have a free suggestion a couple of them you probably need to do a little bit of homework on exactly what kind of program you think you might write but if you just want to write something I think either one of these ways would work I'll mostly show you the way I did it and the way I learned Years ago, I wanted to make a program to control my house with a thermostat and, you know, also just use that. And I did. I found a company called Fidgets that sold USB devices that you could actually, you know, if you were somewhat sophisticated with uh, things, you could actually turn a fan on or off in the window. Or if you had a house fan, maybe I could have turned that on. But I actually had to control my heater and, and read a thermostat temperature and you could have multiple thermostats throughout the house and things have advanced much since then. I imagine it could even be more powerful. In any event, I lost that dream, but it did teach me how to use Visual Studio and more particular at the time, VB.net. I chose VB.net because the company that I worked for at the time, even though I wasn't a programmer, was using uh, Microsoft Access and they were using VBA. So I thought, well, this, you know, why not? I had to kind of pick. Um, in any event, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I, you, you kind of want to know what you want to program. And my recommendation, if you don't have any other choice, might be to get into Visual Studio. This is a free, this Visual Studio community is free. It always is. There's a few things that you might run into as you get really sophisticated including publishing things that may cause you to actually have to pay for the professional version. There is a free trial of that. The program costs you around $500, but again, you don't need that. The Visual Studio community would be fine unless you get into very specific things. And again, the line really tends to be is, are you going to publish stuff? And there are some other limits. If you want to do certain kinds of reports, you, you might have to buy this. I do want to mention before I get into Visual Studio, there is another option. I've never used it, though I know it's out there. I've, I've seen, you know, people's YouTube videos and whatnot when I was trying to learn where they're using this Mono Develop. And as you can see, Mono Develop is cross-platform IDE for C Sharp. So it, you can use the same C Sharp that we're going to use. But notice it doesn't say VB.net. Um, one of the things you can do, or I've heard of people doing, again, haven't used this before, but you can take your Visual Studio C Sharp program, import it into this, and then hopefully, though these things never go as well as you might want, convert that to Linux, Windows, and Mac OS that way. You're probably better off if you really are interested in making Linux programs or Mac programs, just going with the Mono Develop. From the videos I've seen, I think there's some minor conveniences that are better with the the mono develop as far as typing and what that goes but as far as just sheer power and using the net framework which is w based on every windows well most windows computers it's a download that people would need but it's a free download from microsoft to have the right net version you may have even had to download that for a program you've installed so again, do some homework on what kind of package you want. I mean, this is fine if you, especially more for, again, cross-platform kind of things. If your interest is in Linux, this is probably not the right video for you because I am going to basically show you guys how to start a program in Visual Studio. And we'll do a C-sharp program as, to, as opposed to a VB.net. If you just want to take a real quick look at this, if you look at the differences here, they're very minimal. Support scenarios, you know, you don't get enterprise support if you, or and you know, you can't use it in an enterprise way, which is more this way of sharing in between different programmers. Well, if you're just you and your house making your first program, who cares? And same thing, this, I don't even know what exactly this code lens is. I should probably look into it, but apparently I have it with my professional version. Could be something that I use all the time. I don't even know. Um, I didn't ever notice the difference between the two. But And literally on this list, at least, unless you start getting into the footnotes and the real deep details, 
you don't even really see a big difference between these. Though there are more than this graph would probably represent. So let's get into it. All I want to do at this point is show you guys, this is where you'll start once you get it all loaded up, and it can take quite a while. Um, while you open it up, you'll see a whole bunch of different projects, types, and again, if you did a little homework on what kind of project you want to make, you can always come back in later on and pretty sure it's in these tools, you know, extensions and updates, tools and features. Oops, so it's asking me for permission, but you can open this up. So anything that you didn't download, yeah, it's searching the internet, you know, for, for, for what I have versus what. So this is, oh, I don't really want to update Visual Studio Installer. So we're not going to do that, but you get the idea. You can come in here, you can, you know, even if you didn't pick everything that you might want, you can come in later on and add it to Visual Studio. So that'll be another one of the, the developer toolbox tools that you have access to. Those toolbox tools are over here and we'll see those in a minute. But what we wanna do is we wanna create a new project. So this project is, uh, see I made this, yeah, let's see, can we rearrange this? I made our font bigger so we can see it. Now you can't really see it. <laughs> let's see, where is it? Okay, can't we change? No, we can't make that box bigger, can we? That's all right. So again, I got it big enough. I hope you guys can, can read the actual text. And you can see from my last attempt at this when the text was small, what we're going to do is we're going to create a visual C-sharp project. And it's going to be a Windows Classic desktop type. And then they give you all these different kinds. Don't get too overwhelmed with it. If you just want to make a little program that you can hit a button, you want this Windows format. By the way, if you want to make, you know, a web app, you would come in here and ASP.net is Windows version of a web app. So you can either, you know, make an app that shows up, you know, or you can actually make a website, you know, using this ASP.net. We're going to come here. We're not going to try not to get bogged down in too many details. And we're just going to go, you know, test one. We'll name this project. And we're going to create a directory for the solution. And we're just going to put it in my default location, which is in a projects folder within Visual Studio. There may or may not be issues you run into with trying to run things from your My Documents. So you can pick things like having it on the C drive directly, but for what we're doing today, I'm sure this will be fine. What I want to do is come over and bring a label and the font on that label is awful small. So we're going to come over here to our properties window and we can change the text. So we're going to have this text say something along the lines of not loaded. And let's make this a little bit wider so you guys can see everything. We'll come over here. We can either hit the plus thing here or there's the triple arrows. And I didn't change this font on this, but we're going to make, well, let's just make it 16. That way it's plenty big. You can change, you know, your font size. Once you change it, you can see you can actually change it here too. type in the actual number, which will then round it to whatever based on, you know, it'll round it up or down to the, to the default. Now, if you notice this, this is auto size. So in other words, if we want to center this label on the screen, why don't we come down here and see this auto size right here? I'm just gonna double click. You can also select it from the side and it says false. So if you notice, now we have a box. I can drag this all the way over to the side and then it, I got a little helper thing. It like defaults a set distance away and then it'll default the set distance away. And then I want to move it all the way up to the top and it kind of defaults the set distance away. I then want to change this. Why don't we call this the header? A lot of times I'll do this, even though they don't like you to have lowercase letters. Oops, H-E-A-D, header, label header, L-B-L header. So now we'll know when we go over to our code what that is. But I want this to be nice and centered. So let's come back up here to our appearance Let's give it a back color um, and we'll do something that shows up, you know, decent with black. So we'll do Misty Rose. Why not? So if you see, we have a color Misty Rose, but I also want that 
text to be in the middle. So we'll come in here and say text align, and we can either type it in, but we can also come in here and say, I want that to be in the middle center. So if I come down here and make this wider, see, it keeps it in the middle center. You can do middle top, whatever you want. So there we go. We got a nice header not loaded. We also want to add a button. And I will definitely change the font size of that button. Let's make it 16. Now we don't see it, so we'll make our button bigger. There we go. And why don't we put our button? Sometimes I like to put a label like that just so I know where the center of my screen is. I kind of didn't get that perfect. We could change our text to whatever we want. And we'll call this change label. Sound good? And then we'll come down to our name and just just my convention and this way I kind of know when I'm in my code exactly change label button uh, a lot of times what I'll do is put a capital at the beginning of each let you know word and makes it a little bit easy to read and we don't we can't see everything so we'll make that a little bit bigger so now we have a button and we have this but it's not doing anything you know, if we hit play, it'll start up, you know, this is actually called the debug mode and it's, it's rebuilding the project. And then we load this screen and this is sort of like a preview of if you actually publish this, what would happen? But we click the button and nothing happens and this just still says not loaded. It's really no different than this. Everything that happens in a computer happens because some trigger or event fires it. So when we click this button, there's going to be an event. We're just not telling that event to do anything. When this form loads, there's going to be an event. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of a shortcut is come in here and just double click on this. So we have our form one load event because we double clicked on the form. So what happens now is when this form loads, which is a function, and we could even come in here. So we have this designer here. But there's code beside that designer. So if we come in here and see how we have form one designer CS, that's the code script, I guess. I don't know what CS stands for exactly. We can come into here and this is where when this, you know, form one designer, when form one opens, it will come in and do these different things. And these things are, look, we want the back color to be misty rose. And, it, you know, so you can come in here and edit this stuff directly. But what we did by double clicking is right here. So we have this, when the fo form loads, we want you to create an event handler that will let us come into the form code, you could call it, and put in an event. So it's separate from the designer code, but what we want now to do, let's just say that, you know, we wanna change our LBL, see how that makes it a little bit easier, even though my font is very small. And we want to change the text of the label. And we want the text of the label to be fully, oops, fully loaded. Again, there's not too much going on. And then every line in uh, C sharp needs to end with a semicolon. And that gets rid of that little error. So that tells the program, hey, I'm done, done writing this line of code. This lets you write on multiple lines if you want. So now if we come back to our designer, we can hit save though. If we hit start, it would just save it for us. And we will hit the start button again. And now as soon as it pops up, it says fully loaded. We still don't have a button, but let's go ahead and do the same thing with the button. So it didn't pop over to this screen, but I'm pretty sure I double click. Yep. So we changed to double click button and again we should come be able to come in here and see that we we set this event handler right so that will change the button uh, well that'll tell the program when we click the button <laughs> that we now have an event to look for say the sender here and it's going to the event is going is called this so it's pointing to that when that click happens and let's just copy this. Might be a, I don't even 
don't know if it would be quicker, but we'll copy this down. Now we want to say button hit. Let's save it. Let's hit start. Now we hit this and our text changed to button hit. But what if we want to flash this back and forth? The other thing we can do, let's close this again, is within this class where we've declared class form one and it's taking on form type attributes, we can come in here and declare a Boolean and we can call that Boolean on off. And we can set it if we want, even though it defaults to false, we could set it to false. So we can come down here then and use that. So we can say if, and we want to put parentheses, so everything in here is what it's going to evaluate. If on off, now I always try to remember this as is equal to. And then we want to say false. And we need to put the squiggly brackets like you see in other places. So if it's false, it's going to come into this part and it's going to say, oops, control X. Button hit, remember it false, I'm going to assume on off, so like false would be off, so it is off, so we want to turn it on, right? And then we'll come here and we'll say on off equals true. Put our semicolon. Now, what if it's the opposite case? Well, we want to flip it back the other way. So we're going to do else, and then squiggly brackets. And then let's just copy this down and we'll flip things around, right? And we're going to write off. And then we'll change this to false. All right, so there we go. So this should flip it back and forth. We'll change this to false. So the next time it comes in, it goes in here. And then it changes this to true. And then it comes down here. By the way, we can also do else if, if we wanted. Now, see, it doesn't like that. It likes the space in between. So else if it equals true. Now, the other thing you can do, by the way, so this would work fine. You can also, as a shortcut, do this. Because if this, because this is a Boolean, it will recognize that this says true, right? So we can also come up here as a further trick and put an exclamation mark. So this is saying if it's not true, or in other words, if it's false, then do this. Now again, I like to a lot of times, you know, leave it with the equals because it's pretty easy to miss this little exclamation or not exclamation, but this is perfectly valid. So let's see if we sit here one off, one off. Now one more thing we can do, and you can set these before or after. Let's just come in here, and this is a debug breakpoint. So by clicking all the way over here, we put this little red arrow. Now when we come back into our program, we can stop it right there. And what this lets us do, this is absolutely critical and wonderful when you start getting complex programs. If you hover over it, and I'm sorry my tooltips are so small there, but it says on off false. So what that means is, is because we have the exclamation, if it's false, it's going to jump into there. See, so it jumps in, sets on off to true, and then goes on its way. When we look at the designer, it says on off on because it came in here and then we'll do it one more time. This time, if I hover over here and again, apologize for the small text, which you probably can't read. It says on off true, which means it won't go into the top part. It will go into the bottom part. And there you go. So you can put these breakpoints pretty much anywhere you want. And that helps you, you know, figure out what's going right or wrong with your code. You can come in here and, hey, wait a minute, why didn't it jump into here? And, you, you know, you got a problem right there or whatever the case is. So there you go. I think we have made our first program. I mean, it's really that simple. Um, 
I will continue with a few more simple videos after this one. And eventually I'd like to talk to you guys about, you know, creating a video game using uh, Visual Studio and Unity. So stay tuned for a while. It'll be a while before I were to get to that video. But if you have any suggestions on what you would like to see next or even questions about what I did, just let me know. I know this is very basic, but if you do what I did, you will in to some very minor degree, be a programmer, right? You'll have written your first program. Not that it does much, but change this label. Hey, it's something. It's a start. Everybody starts somewhere. So I hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy programming in general. It can be a very interesting thing. Well, take care. Bye-bye.